So hello everyone, and thank you for joining the conversation today. For those of you who don't know, the 6888 was an all black battalion of the Women, Women's Army Corps that was established during World War II. Prior to that, aside from a few small nursing units, black women had not been permitted to serve in the armed services or the armed forces. And these history makers were tasked with sorting through the extensive backlog of mail that had gone undelivered to service members overseas. They coined the now famous group motto, no male, low morale, Despite their patriotic work after the war, the battalion was unceremoniously disbanded. And their story is so important. Their strength, despite the discrimination that they faced is nothing short of heroic. They still raise their hands to serve this country and we owe them a debt of gratitude to these trailblazing women. So this is the history that we must remember because history shows us that while we have made progress, we still have a very long way to go and we must all commit to going that distance. In Congress, I have co-sponsored the 6888 Central Congressional Gold Medal Act. As a third generation veteran myself, I remember hearing the stories of military heroes from my father and my grandfather. And today I wanna to share the story of the 6888 with our community. Commander Carlton Philippot of the United States Navy required, uh, retired and Master Sergeant Elizabeth Helm Fraser, US Army retired. Thank you very much both for being here today. I was hoping that I might be able to ask you to tell me a little bit about yourselves and perhaps we'd start with Elizabeth. Okay, well, thank you Representative Houlihan for inviting uh, me and Commander Phil Pot. We appreciate that very much. My name is Elizabeth Ann Helm Fraser. I am a US Army veteran. I served in the US Army for 25 years, 10 months and 26 days. I am originally from Largo, Florida. My dad was, a, was in the Army as a, in the Korean War and my uncle, his brother, spent 20 years in the Army as a Army Master Sergeant and one of his favorite things was to get mail from his mother, which was my grandmother, okay? I now work for the Department of Veteran Affairs. So I often say that I am self-employed, self-employed. I am a veteran that works for an organization that works for all veterans. I uh, got it's very nice to talk to you. And let's turn it over to Mr. Philpott, please, uh, Commander Philpott. Good afternoon, our Representative Hulahan. It's certainly a, it's a pleasure to be a part of this interview to discuss the history of the 688. And we certainly appreciate your support of the 688 Congressional Gold Medal, which is long overdue. As far as me, my grandfather, I think, died in the World War I from the pandemic. Uh, my uncle was a veteran from Korea. That's the first bullet wound I'd ever seen in his shoulder. My uncle served in the Navy. My father was in the Navy twice. And I was too young the first time my great grandmother got him out. And I stayed 24 and a half years in the Navy. And I, I've taught grades from one through master to the master degree level. I retired as a assistant, assistant professor in the business department. And I've spent the last 30 years building monuments, spearheading efforts to build monuments for eight military units, African-American military units and individuals and um, as volunteers. And it's certainly a part, to be great to be a part of this interview to be presented to your community to discuss the 688 which is a great thing that it's non-political. It's just something. The ladies did their part. The American people did their part when they raised $100,000 and we did a $250,000 monument with just $100,000 with the grace of a lot of business people. And the army did their part because these ladies, when they returned home, in spite of their superb service, they did not get a unit medal. And so in 219, with Senator Moran's help, the Army awarded them the Army's uh, Meritorious Unit Commendation. And that was one of the things, as I read, personal paper that bothered them. And now Congress is getting an opportunity to do their part with the Congressional Gold Medal, which is certainly deserving. 
Yeah, and I Thank really you for your support. You're really welcome, and I really look forward to that opportunity. And and we have a lot in common, all three of us. You know, I, as I mentioned, come from a family of service as well. My dad and grandfather, thirty years plus, each in the Navy. I have active duty cousins who are in the Navy still. I was Air Force. My brother was was Army. And one of the memories that I have of being a child is my dad frequently being deployed. And this was before you know technology was a- around, and we would mail back and forth when he was uh, overseas and we would also record ourselves on video, uh, I mean, on, on audio cassettes and we would mail the audio cassettes back and forth to each other. So I agree that this is such an inc- incredibly crucial mission. And I was wondering maybe if we could bounce back and forth between the two of you. I'll start with Elizabeth with a, a bunch of really uh, interesting questions to try and get some depth to this, to this conversation. Uh, Elizabeth, I was hoping you might be able to tell us about the, for those who haven't heard of the 6888 and the Central Postal Directory Battalion, can you explain briefly what the historical significance of this group was? Thank you. The significance of this particular unit is actual several things. Number one, they were an all black female unit that was pretty significant during World War II. And these women were charged with what I often say, the third most important thing to a service member, because remember, this was World War II. So we didn't have any social media, no email, we had none of that, okay? Besides getting paid and eating, Mail was the third most important thing to a service member. When I was in the, in the service, I always saw a picture, and I don't know if you can really see it in back of me, but it was of Charity Adams inspecting the troops. And I always wanted to know, well, where's that unit at? Because that's the unit that I want to be in. These were women that looked like me. These were women that in spite of everything that was already against them uh, in, in our own country, they went over and not only did they complete the mission, the army gave them six months to reduce this backlog of mail in the European theater, six months. This unit through the excellent, extraordinary leadership of Charity Adams and her command staff, these women reduced this backlog in three months. Remember, this was World War II. So there were a lot of people that could barely write, could barely spell, and this unit was charged to get them to reduce the backlog and get the mail out to service members and to civilians that were serving over in the European theater. Not only did they do it, but they did it in three months. Wow, that's remarkable. 